All right, we have our fender here, and we're going to get started sanding on it. One thing I wanted to go over real quick is the type of sandpaper that you want to use. There is specific sandpaper for automotive use uh, versus woodworking, and so it will uh, be good to get the right sandpaper. Otherwise, uh, it will clog up and it just will not work uh, near as well as what uh, automotive grade sandpaper will will give you. So this is uh, 3M uh, wet or dry. Uh, I'm going to start with 100, which is very coarse, uh, and that's simply because I want to try to get you know as much of this top coat off as I can. Uh, you will want to go over it uh, afterwards with some finer grit sandpaper. Otherwise, you'll see uh, sand scratch marks in your final paint, and you do not want that. So we're going to start with 100 grit. We're going to follow up with 220. And then uh, we'll probably put uh, one or two more grits after that, uh, finer grits on it, so that we can get a good smooth surface before we start uh, with any type of uh, primer or top coating. Uh, as far as things that you can use to uh, uh, use as a backing for sanding, uh, you do not want to use your fingertips. And the reason why is if you take your fingers and let's say you, you, you take a strip of this and you start sanding and you're doing this number right here well you can actually sand the grooves into the paint and you will see every bit of that in the top coat so what you want is something flat uh, one of the things that I like to use is a paint stick that you can get at the uh, paint store and you can just wrap your sandpaper around the paint stick there and then you know of course you cut this off and then you can just you just go over it like so and then that gives you a, you know, a flat surface and it will help flatten the panel out uh, any imperfections it will uh, go a long ways in, in getting uh, that panel flat as well do the same thing with the 220 once you get done uh, this paper can be gotten I believe you can get it at some of the big box stores uh, like Walmart and then of course you can also get it at any uh, parts uh, supply auto parts supply stores I've got another little sanding block here you can use something like that as well gives you a little bit more grip again you're just looking for a flat surface right. stick this in here like so that's just going to hold the paper, do the same thing up here, and then we've got a little wedge that we're going to stick in there, it's going to hold it in place for us. Alright, and there we go. So we're just going to start. One thing you, you will want to do as well is wash the fender before you sand because if it's got any oil or anything like that on it, it will uh, embed the oil into the paint or burn the oil into the paint and again that will ruin your final paint job. So make sure you've got a clean fender before you start sanding. Alright, so you can see that we're already getting that top coat off pretty good. So what we're going to want to do is go all the way down to this gray, uh, which is the primer. And so we'll just keep sanding at this until we can get uh, all the fender down to that same color. Now this is going to take a while, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but what I want to do, again, is show you how this is doable with just regular tools. Uh, so I could take a sander. Uh, an orbital sander uh, which would be a lot quicker and get this done in no time but that's usually with you know not not in reach of what a typical do-it-yourselfer may or may not have uh, if you've got those tools at your disposal then by all means uh, you can use a, a what's called a, a, a DA sander and uh, put, you know, it's a it's an orbital round 
palm type thing and you can just go over it. Uh, they can be gotten at uh, places like Harbor Freight for 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, it does require air though, so if you do not have an air compressor, then you know that's obviously a lot more cost. Uh, you can get some electric sanders, but they're more along the lines of a finish sander, and that's you're you're not going to get you're not going to get anywhere with a finish sander, uh, even with a uh, coarse sandpaper. So you'd just be better off, you know, doing this with uh, by hand, and you know, as long as it's not a large panel, uh, it'll go quicker than than uh, than you think it might. All right, so we're going to continue sanding. I've got my 100 grit sandpaper on here still. Uh, one thing I did not mention initially is when you're sanding, you're going to obviously create dust, and so a good thing to do is to wear a dust mask, and that's going to keep any kind of uh, dust particles from getting in your lungs for the most part. So we're going to put one of these on and show best practice here. One of the things that you can do with automotive sandpaper is it's wet or dry. I don't know if you can see this very well on the camera. I will attempt to show it. As you can see, as we start sanding, the paint is going to clog up that sandpaper. So one of the things that you can do, since this is wet or dry sandpaper, is you can take and dip it in water. So we're just going to take, put a little water on it. and try to work some of that sand or that paint out of the paper because when the sand or when the paint gets in there and clogs it up then the sandpaper is effectively no longer working so we want to try to keep that sandpaper as clean as we can at all times otherwise you're going to struggle getting this uh, thing sanded down all right so we're going to continue So I'll show you here, we've got these body lines here where these edges are exposed or we've got a little ridge in the fender. So one thing that you want to be sure of when you're sanding is not to stay on these edges for very long because it's very easy to get down to the metal on those and then what you'll wind up with is you know, uneven paint, you'll be down to the metal and then we'll be in that situation now where you need some type of etching primer uh, and otherwise uh, the paint's gonna have a hard time sticking. So sometimes if you hit an edge and too much and, and it gets down to metal, you're okay if it's not a big spot. But just wanted to mention that uh, so that you can be careful around those uh, edges. Something that you might do too is change what you're using so you could potentially use like this paint paddle uh, to get into the edge where it fits a little bit better than where is this block that I've got doesn't fit as well. So you could take this paint paddle, kind of get in there with that, well, of course, with the sandpaper wrapped around it. Also something you want to do while you're sanding is as dust builds up on this thing you want to keep it wiped off as best you can uh, otherwise the the dust and all it's going to do is uh, clog up your sandpaper so you want to keep as clean of surface as you can uh, ideally 
you would want to use an air hose if you had it. Uh, but again, we're doing this from a perspective of somebody that may not have an air compressor. So we're just simply going to take a rag and just wipe it off. That'll get rid of the dust. Uh, my heat gun did not work, uh, so I'm going to have to, I've got another one uh, at home, so I'm going to have to take this thing home and try to, to uh, heat this emblem up and get it to release. So right now all we're going to do is just sand around it and try to get the rest of the fender down to where we need it, and then we'll uh, take the and one more flask. So now that I've got the fender wiped down good, I can continue on with my sanding. Okay, one thing that I want to show you is if you've got a spot, there's a little dip here, and I can't tell whether it's got a little bit of a dent in it or whether it's uh, made that way, but it's, it's going to be hard to get to with a flat surface. So I want to basically break the rule that I gave you before about not using your fingertips and show you that if you have to use your fingertips, the right way to use your fingertips. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of fingers, three fingers, however, whatever fits on your sandpaper here. And instead of going like this in the direction that my fingers go, I'm going to go against the direction, the opposite of the way my, my fingers are. And so by doing that, that will prevent any grooves from going into the paint. So again, if you have to use your fingers to get into a spot that you can't otherwise get into, you go the opposite direction than the way your fingers run. And that'll prevent the grooves from happening into the paint. I'm not going to cover a lot of body work here. Actually, I'm not going to cover body work at all. But I wanted to show you a uh, quick example of how to reveal a little den and a fender. So if you're working with a flat surface like this, so we've got another flat surface, our paint paddle, and we've got our sandpaper on it. As you're running down that flat surface, if you come across a spot that's not getting sanded, then basically what that means is you've got a low spot. Uh, if it was, which means that you know something hit it a rock or something or somebody bumped it, whatever, and created a dip in the fender. And so now you can see that spot there uh, is not been sanded because you can't reach, you know, we've got two flat surfaces against each other. So if you if you know if I were going to fix this and try to make the panel completely perfect or near perfect then I would you know sand this down uh, bare and put some body filler on it sand it smooth and do all that uh, I am NOT going to do that uh, this is just a uh, paint only job so uh, ju I just wanted to show you that though and uh, let you know that uh, uh, that is indeed what you've got there now if it was a high spot if for whatever reason uh, you know something was 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 you know, came came into the panel from the backside and pushed out on it. Then what would happen is just the opposite. I would sand over it and get down to you know uh, uh, the finish underneath it or or even bare metal first before I got to the rest of the panel. So um, that would be the difference uh, between the high and the low spot. Alright, if this had been the original paint, 
then you know, sanding this down to a dull finish probably would have been okay, uh, especially if the paint was in otherwise good shape. Uh, this is, you can see where I've gotten down to the, the primer here, but I haven't went any further. Uh, that's quite all right. Um, what you would want to do though, again, if this was the original paint and you were going to just sand this to the point where you know you could put some a good top coat on top of it, is you'd want to make sure there was no shiny spots left on the fender. So you can see as you start sanding this, it will obviously dull down. But then if you look in the light, you can see just these little wrinkly, uh, shiny spots that are left. Uh, if that's there, then that means you haven't sanded it down far enough. So you need to continue to keep sanding. So you want no shiny spots whatsoever, uh, nothing that would reflect light uh, on, the, on the panel. So um, just wanted to mention that as well. Uh, this paint, now that I've got it sanded off, it, it, or sanded down, it's not in terrible, terrible shape. I just simply didn't want uh, both the original and the aftermarket paint, the secondary coat uh, on it is because I, I essentially didn't want three, three different coats of paint on it. So that's really the only, the only reason why I'm taking this down further than I would, uh, let's say, a fender that was uh, still had the original paint on it. All right, I wanted to show you a couple of things that you want to watch out for when you're sanding. Uh, we still are going over this fender with 100 grit, so you see all these sand scratches here. That All that will go away uh, once we get some finer sandpaper going on. But what I wanted to show you is uh, these shiny spots. So as you can see, this right here is places in the paint that essentially haven't been sanded yet. Uh, so we're still working the old paint down and these are spots that we just you know haven't gotten to yet uh, with the sanding block. So you want to continue to sand until all that is gone. So in comparison you can see this right here, th there's, no, there's none of those spots here. So we've gotten uh, at least all the paint sanded you know, on our first pass. So you want to do, you want to get rid of all this the shiny stuff long before you start doing your final sanding because uh, essentially what that means is there's you know this there's not uh, there's not a good enough foundation for you to start prepping for paint and uh, you don't want to leave you know any of that in the in the paint whatsoever before you start to finish work all right so what I've got here is uh, pretty well rough sanded fender. I used again a 100 grit sandpaper with a wooden sanding block and that basically got most of the old paint off down to uh, what was the original paint that I feel like is a pretty good base to paint over. So you might run your hand over this after you use some coarse sandpaper and think oh wow this thing is smooth it's ready to go but it is absolutely uh, not. If you, if you cleaned all this off and just painted over it as is, you would certainly see uh, sand scratches uh, through the paint after it, after it dried. So uh, you want to definitely take some finer grit paper and, and, you know, in a progression and sand it down to where you can't see sand scratches anymore. And you can probably see, yeah, so here's some right here. But I mean, they're all over. And uh, the easiest thing to do is just go up to a, a little bit finer sandpaper. I'm going to use uh, some 220. And again, we started out with 100. So I'm just going to take this sanding block, the same one I used before, 
and go over this with some 220 and then uh, we'll probably go over it once or twice more with uh, finer sandpaper before we get ready for paint. And this will seem like a little bit more tedious process <laughs> if uh, the 100 grit wasn't tedious enough for you. Uh, the, the thing here is, is you're not going to be taking off a whole lot of material as you go up to a finer grit sandpaper, but you are going to be smoothing it out. A lot of it won't be as obvious with, uh, you know, as it were with uh, 100 grit sandpaper, but you will definitely see the difference in the final job. As you can see here, as we start to sand, we are getting we are getting dust, which that essentially means that you know paint's coming off. And so what I'm going to move to now is probably a 400, and uh, I might even try to do some wet sanding. So if you use uh, wet or dry sandpaper, which that is what this stuff is, and it'll say on the back, yeah, it'll say wet or dry. And typically, the stuff that looks like this, that's uh, dark colored sandpaper, it's most of it is wet or dry paper, but to be sure, uh, it'll say it on the back. And what that'll do is, is you know, using the, the, the finer sandpaper with water, uh, that'll allow us to, uh, you know, get a, get a much smoother finish. It will also help with the dust, and uh, you won't clog up in your sandpaper as much. Uh, it still will clog, but instead of taking, you know, an air hose or a rag or something and dusting it off, uh, instead, what you'll be doing is just rinsing it under water or like a spray bottle. And so that'll get it down uh, to where it's essentially like glass, and then you'll be ready for paint uh, once it's all cleaned up. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. All right, so I've started sanding here with our 400 grit sandpaper. What I've got is uh, some water in a squirt bottle, even though it says Windex, it is water. Got some 400 wet or dry sandpaper. And what we're doing is we're just wetting this fender down. interest of staying low tech, low buck. I'm just going to take this stuff with our hand and just start going over the entire fender. Now you can see we've got like a milky surface going on here and basically that's just dust residue that's mixing with the water. So we are cutting, if you will, with the sandpaper. And what you want to do is you just want to go over the entire thing until you get a glass finish. And then once you think you've got it done, then you can dry it off and go over it with your hand. Just rub the entire fender. And if you feel any rough spots, then you know you, you missed something and just Go back and touch it up with your sandpaper and water. So this will give you the glass finish that we're looking for for a top coat. Now one thing that we did not do in this video is uh, use primer. And the reason why I did not do that is simply because uh, the paint on this fender was in good enough shape to where I felt like that I didn't need to do that. Uh, what, why would you, why would you use primer? Um, you would, you would use primer is it, if you've got like a, a surface that's not one one color, uh, or if you've got like a surface where you've you've got high and low spots, 
like where you did not sand evenly. So you've got like where you've burned through, you know, through the primer to the primer on one spot, and then here you've got, you know, old paint and this and that and the other. So what what would what you would want to do is you'd want a just a solid, good base coat, and that's why you would prime first. Uh, I would prime after about, uh, you know, you go over it with the 220. Uh, you could prime it after you went over it with 100 grit, certainly, because the primer is going to fill in most of the sand scratches that you that you have with that coarse sandpaper. And then you want to just start out uh, after you after you prime it with like 220, and then go to you know maybe 320 or 400. But this is such a good surface that I'm just I'm just going to go with it, and uh, so I'm just taking this 400 as I mentioned, and uh, we're just gonna go over the entire thing, wet sand it, get that glass finish we're looking for, and then we'll be ready to clean it up to paint. All right, so now that we're, we've done all the wet sanding we're gonna do, uh, it's time to clean the fender up now by going out and washing it. So what I would suggest is just take a hose pipe and rinse it off really, really good. And then take some uh, Dawn dishwashing detergent or something like that. And uh, just soapy bucket of water like you would a car. And just wash every little piece of the fender inside, out, back, in the corners. Uh, because if you don't get the little hard to reach places, what will happen is, is as you're spraying the paint, you'll run across something where there's dust or dirt hiding and it'll just jump right into your paint and that will not be good. So just uh, wash it up real good and we'll clean our work surface up and get ready for paint. <laughs> 